You know it's funny. People ask me, being around so long, I hear the question every day. I've been around so many days that you gotta take into consideration both those how many times I heard this right here people ask of me. How do you do it? That's what they ask me. How do you keep going on? How do you keep doing invasions in that old Elden Ring now that the game was so old? And I tell them, you know, that's, that's all there is to do is to just keep going on. Like I'm gonna just wake up one morning and not do it no more. It's never gonna happen. I'm gonna be here forever. Hey, it's time to stop sucking at invasions. It's time to it's time to not suck at them anymore. So here's what you're gonna do. Uh, you're gonna find you. This is for you know if you're casting spells and you're an invader. Um, you know it doesn't matter if you're a host. You can do. You just have a friend. Boom. Your build is done. You're the baddest person that ever lived. You have phantoms. Congratulations. Uh, anyway, find yourself a spell that does a lot of damage. Giant's Flame, take thee on this build. Find a spell that hits more than it misses. Catch Flame. And this could be anything, keep that in mind. It could be Carrion Slicer and Carrion Piercer, whatever. It could be anything. Just a spell that always hits and a spell that hits for a lot of damage. Boom, you're done. Alright, you need that. Now we gotta maximize our damage. It's almost impossible to make a build not work in this game. It's almost impossible to make a build that doesn't do damage. Right? Um, so just do that it's easy you know maximize your damage maximize your health and uh you know now you're good to go people ask me they're like hey what level's the best to invade at and it depends what is your definition of best if you're just looking for activity then lower level is the best because everybody who plays this game is level 15 at some point but they might not stick with the game after that only you know uh, uh, only, you know, 80% of those players go on to be level 30, and only 80% of those players go on to be level 60, and only 80% of those players go on to be level 80, and only 80% of those players go on to meta level, yada yada, right? And so, a chunk of the people you're playing with are getting cut off as, you know, you continue to make a build. So, you know, if you're gonna make a build at level 60, it needs to be tight, it needs to, there's no fat, you gotta trim all the fat off that baby, it's gotta just be one damage stat and, uh, you know, and hit points. And if you want to, um, you know, if you wanna improve that build, if you wanna give it a little wiggle room, you're gonna have to do that with your Wondrous Physic and your Talismans. At level 80, it's pretty much the same thing, except now your Wondrous Physic uh, and your Talismans are, you know, really allowing you to get more stuff on the build, be it more damage, more weapons, more hit points, um, more, you know, more different types of spells, right? So, you know, let's say you've got like a, a, a Faith Int build, all right, well at level 80, with a Wondrous Physic, you know, and, and the right Talismans, you can go from having like 20 Int, 20 Faith, to having like 35, 35, or something like that, and that's a huge improvement for an int faith caster. So, you know, at level 80, you, you start to get this, you know, this wiggle room that you didn't have at 60. And that wiggle room just increases as you go up and up and up. But keep in mind that it will always, uh, you know, you'll always win more if you just run the most efficient build that you can run. But like, I'm using Fire's Deadly Sin and all this other crazy stuff, right? Okay, a lot of that comes with uh, I mean, it's 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 all the same root cause. Um, the root cause is I play this game a lot, and so as a result, I get a lot of footage because a lot of stuff happens because I play the game a lot. So I have footage of these spells working, where you know maybe most people don't have that footage. The other thing is I play this game a lot, so like I I have gotten better at it. I know 
you know, okay, there are these niche little uses where I can make these spells do stuff that, uh, you know, maybe your average player doesn't. If you want to do that type of thing, there is no shortcut to it. Uh, I mean, you can watch all the videos you want, but you're still going to have to get in there and learn how to do it yourself and, like, actually, like, put it into practice. And that's its own, you know, that's its own little thing that you'll have to do. Um, but, yeah, so, like, what's the best level for invading? Whatever level you think is the most fun to make builds at. Um, and, you know, like, if you want to make a crazy build with a ton of stats and you want to make a level 200 build, like, that's fine. But a lot of people, like an insane number of people, are like, yeah, I'm like level 400 or 500 and I don't get as many invasions as you. And it's like, that's why. There's not as many people playing at level 400 or 500 or whatever. I think at 301 is the cutoff. Where at, after 301, you can just invade anybody else who's above 301. Uh, or, you know, or 300, I guess. At, at 301, you can invade anyone from a level 301 person to uh, a level 700 person, right? But you're not going to find as many invasions because there's less people playing at that level than there is playing at level 30, right? So that's something to, to keep in mind. Like, if your level's 400, 500, 600, or whatever, like, and you want to get a lot of invasions, um, you're going to have to just make a different build. Just bite the bullet and, you know, make a new build. Uh, it, it just is what it is. Honestly, it's not a bad time to do that. Make a new build before the DLC comes out, and now you're ready to go once the DLC comes out. Okay, so all of this stuff is like character sheet stuff. This is all stuff that happens on the character sheet. Um, and pretty much anybody can tell you all this. Like, it's fine. Actually, anybody can tell you anything that I'm saying. This is not... Uh, in fact, I've said it before. So, let's talk about the other stuff. The stuff that's not on the character sheet. Um, heal. Often. And heal early. Uh, there, there used to be a fella who made videos uh, about Dark Souls 3 invasions. And uh, one of the things that he said that stuck with me because of its trueness was uh, no invader ever died with a full flask. I'm sorry, with an empty flask. And what they meant was, was that invaders... Uh, you know, it, you, if you try and ration your healing too much, you'll just die, right? Because, you know, uh, let's say there's an attack and let's say it does 30% of your health. Let's say you don't heal that off, all right? Okay, now you get hit by three people at the same time, back to back to back, okay? And they just did 30, 60, 90, you're dead, you're gone, right? And, and so the point was, drink your flask, uh, even when you don't necessarily think that you would have to. And the point there is because you're going to take uh, a lot of damage if you get hit uh, by three people all at the same time. Um, but there's a line you need to walk there. Look at the amount of health that I have right now. All right, now I just beat that phantom, so like if I want to burn a flask, that's fine because he's his death is going to give me a flask back but uh, this amount of health that I have taken off that they have taken off of me right here um, I wouldn't heal that off but you know anything more than that I would be thinking about whether or not I'm going to heal right especially in a situation like this where it's two or three players now when you're fighting one player you can be a little more um, you can be a little more conservative about, you know, your flasks and when you use them. Uh, because you're going to want to try and, you know, keep in mind that the host probably has more flasks than you. You're an invader. The number of flasks that you have on your character has been cut in half. And if you're playing a spellcaster, you've had to allocate some of that uh, for blue flasks. Um, so, when you're fighting someone who has twice as many flasks as you... You have to play conservative with your flask, uh, and you know because they've just got more than you. It's easier for them to to just chug it off. Um, so you have to play better. Not only do you have to play better to beat them, but you also have to play better to like manage your flask usage, right? See what I'm doing right here? Uh, I was at like half health, and I was not drinking. I was just chasing that guy down. That is a thing that gets me killed 
all the time because you get tunnel vision and you're chasing down this this phantom who's at low health and as you chase down this low level I'm sorry this low health phantom uh, you get hit from behind and then you get hit from the front and now you're dead right so uh, you know that's like I'm aware that that's a mistake that I make I make it a lot it, it, that's one of like the leading causes of my death and like that's okay um, when you are an invader like up here what I have done is I brought all three players up here there's no enemies they've killed all the enemies already in the level uh, so when I come up here uh, I, I'm able to like use this platform as essentially a ring and I I'm able to to drop down off the ledge if I need to I'm able to make a little escape if I need to like I chose this place to fight for a reason um, Sometimes, though, uh, against players who have meaner builds, you maybe wouldn't want to put yourself in a situation like this against three players. You would want to try and find uh, some type of um, enemy to, like, provide you with backup when you need it so that you can, like, back off and heal, right? Because sometimes you need to, to, to back off and heal and you need an enemy to sort of keep the party busy while that's happening, uh... Because if you don't, they're just going to punish your heal, and, you know, once they do that, it, you're down a flask and at low health again, right? So, knowing when to heal is important. Having something to help you heal is uh, also important. Know when to heal, alright? Uh, don't heal right in front of somebody, unless you absolutely have to. Um, don't chug twice is a thing, that I, and I struggle with that sometimes. It's not worth it. It takes, it takes too long, and so what ends up happening is if you had just chugged once, you could have had your health and got away, but you chugged twice, thinking that, oh, I can get away with two, I can get away with another chug, but what ends up happening is they're up on you, and now that second chug is just out the window, and you have wasted one of your, one of your flasks. Um, so, you know, don't chug twice. If you have to, you know, if you really need to, drink once, uh, you know, resettle, and then break away and heal a second time on the on the second breakaway. But don't don't heal twice on the same breakaway unless you are 100% certain that they're not going to punish you. And keep in mind that they have spells to punish you. They have bows. They have, you know, whatever. Uh, so, like, that's a thing that you have to, like, learn how to do is just heal smarter than your opponent. Um, Elden Ring has a little bit of, like, Bloodborne to it. Uh, in Bloodborne, like that is a great example. I, I chug and I get hit with a rock right in the face for like almost more than that flask killed me for. Uh, so we're going to use the Crimson Seed Talisman to make sure we get the absolute most and see how they're not pressuring me. They're not, you know, so like that's a thing. You know, pay attention to your opponent. Do they pressure you all the time? If they don't, make that swap to the Crimson Seed Talisman so that you can uh, get the most out of your flask. But my point is, in Bloodborne, um, if you tried to heal, heals were very, very fast in Bloodborne. Uh, but your opponent could shoot you mid-heal, and if they did, it counted as a parry. And so they could take a repost, and that's it. Like, you're dead. Like, it, it's over, probably. Um, Elden Ring is similar, except instead of, like, parrying the heal, instead what's happening is... Uh, you know, everybody has an Ash of War or a spell that they can pull out at the drop of a hat. It does a lot of damage and it's fast. And now you're going to eat that. And these players, you know, they're quick to pull out Double Spears. They're quick to pull out Moon Veil. Uh, all the best stuff in all the YouTube videos. The good news is, is you're going to see that a lot. You're going to get used to it. You're going to get accustomed to it. And you're going to learn how to play around it. Uh, the bad news is, is if you make a mistake, it's still going to absolutely wreck you. Another thing, and I'm doing that in this invasion, I'm playing with the level to my back, and what that means is I can always be retreating back towards something that will help me out. These two players have meaner builds than the three players that we just fought, uh, so they're more dangerous, right? And we were able to take out one of the three with uh, a fireball, like, relatively early. So always have the level at your back okay well what happens if you invade somebody and you're not supposed to use the level and i put supposed to in big finger quotes there because uh it, like 
when you have this type of fight, you might say to yourself, like, oh, this person wants to have a, an honorable fight. No, they don't. They have a phantom hiding in the bushes somewhere, or they're, they've got the little blue thing on so that blues will show up and help them out. You will oftentimes see liars on the internet say, I wish I could still get invaded as a solo host. I miss that. Uh, and maybe they don't know about the taunter's tongue or whatever. But what that person actually means is, I wish that I could get invaded in a situation I had total control over. When you invade a solo host like this and they start drinking from their flask, like we talked about earlier, they have more than you, right? That's an advantage they wouldn't have in the arena. People often see me fight these people on my stream and they say, why don't they go to the arena? And the answer is one of two things. You can't fight the streamer in the arena. And two, they don't have these advantages in the arena. You can't call for help if you start losing in the arena. Uh, you can do that in, uh, in, in, in the open world like this. And two, you don't have twice as many heals as your opponent in the arena. But you have that here. Uh, also, consider, you know, they might be 20, 30 levels higher than you. Uh, they might have a weapon that's been upgraded three times more than your weapon has been upgraded. These are all advantages that these people may or may not have over you when you invade them as a solo host. The point I'm making is, in a situation like this, you're not quote-unquote supposed to use the level to your advantage, but like absolutely to hell with that. Run away. Buy, a, buy the ballista. Buy the, or, I'm sorry, pick up the ballista or go get the jar cannon. Um, or a great bow. Get that ring that makes you invisible. And when you come across these types of players, uh, especially the ones who are using like the most meta setups of all, like just hide somewhere and shoot them. You know, like have you ever noticed? People are saying people will say, "I miss getting invaded as a solo host." You ever notice that like almost never, like 99.99% of the time. Are these people ever in any danger when you invade them? Because, like, that was a part of solo host invasions. I didn't just invade solo hosts who were standing at a grace, you know, or a bonfire. I would invade people who were surrounded by a gang of pontiff knights. I would invade a solo host who was uh, being chased by dogs and ghosts shooting magic, you know. I would invade a solo host in Dark Souls 1 in the catacombs who's being chased by 36 bone wheel skeletons. Isn't it strange that you never seem to find a solo host in a similar situation in Elden Ring? They say they want their solo invasions back. They want to get invaded, but I, I, I'm telling you, what they really want is absolute and total control over every aspect of the fight. All right, another thing that you probably just saw me use was uh, the Phantom Recusant Finger or the Phantom Bloody Finger. Uh, that is like, People gripe about it all the time, but that thing rules. Its job is not to give you a better spawn point. It doesn't do that, and people get mad at it because it doesn't do that. And I understand, because there's really bad spawn points in all the way. But this thing's job is to just move you around a little bit. As you just saw, it totally got rid of a blue from me. A, a, a blue totally just gone because I used that finger, and the blue doesn't have a finger, so there's no way for him back up here, you know? So, yeah, those fingers, they're not terrible. Anyway, that's the video. It's also not terrible. And I'll see you on the next one. Until then, later, y'all.